Hi, my name is Carl, and today I will show you three different ways of how you can uh, work with frequency separation for skin retouching. And um, I can tell you something about this photo. It's shot at a pretty wide aperture. It's aperture 2.2, I believe. I can look that up in Lightroom. But uh, we can state that uh, this eye is in focus and this one is uh, slightly out of focus. So it's a very short uh, depth of field, but you still have a lot of skin texture and the skin texture is a important part of the frequency separation concept. All right, so first thing you want to do is to make two copies of this layer. You can do that by pressing Command J and you will name one of the layers to high and the other layer to low. So basically what you want to do is to create one layer that is the high frequency where you have uh, all this uh, skin texture and small details like hair and wrinkles. And then you have this low frequency layer, which is the actual gradient of the skin tones if it goes from darker to lighter. And you want to edit those separately. So if you want to do something with the skin tones, you do that in the low layer and if you want to uh, maybe edit some details in the texture you can do that in the high frequency layer and as you can see you keep them separated so that's why we call it frequency separation all right so the next thing you want to do is to uh, create a smart object of the low frequency layer then you want to hide the high frequency layer and after that you want to apply some Gaussian blur on your uh, low frequency layer and you want to have just such an amount so that you don't really see the details in the skin texture maybe you should have this at maybe a hundred percent instead uh, actually I believe it was a somewhat good value, eight pixels or maybe seven is enough. And then you wanna to go to the high frequency layer. You wanna to go to image and uh, apply image. And you want to work with the low frequency layer and you want to invert this one and select add so basically what you want to do is you want this high frequency layer be the difference between the background and the low frequency layer so that the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer together will be equal to the background. You can see that mostly we have the texture in this layer but there's also a small amount of colors here so you can see there is a brownish color here and a more grayish color here so it's not totally separated but it's uh, more or less separated so you have all the details in the high frequency layer and you have the skin tones in the low frequency layer and then you want to change the blending mode to linear light so these two layers together will be the exact same uh, information as the background. So if you hold down your option key and click on the background, you can uh, hide those layers. And you see there is no difference. All right, so what I wanna show you now is basically some different ways of how you can work with those layers separately. So if you want to smoothen out the skin tones here, uh, the color of the skin tone, but you want to keep the textures intact, you should work in this low frequency layer. 
And actually, I shouldn't have made this one as a smart object yet, because as a reference, I wanted to show you the kind of default way of uh, working with uh, frequency separation or the old school way if you want. So I will uh, take this layer and I will uh, rasterize it. And as you can see, uh, I'm hiding this smart object and now I'm working with the low copy here and I should type uh, rasterized. All right, so if I now want to have a smoother skin transition here, I can work with the lasso tool. And you can see that you have a certain amount of uh, feathering here. So if you press Q, you can see if this is a smooth edge or if you maybe you should need a um, softer edge or sharper edge, but I believe this could be a good start. So let's stick with, uh, or let's put 30 pixels here instead. Um, and then you should select filter and you should select blur and Gaussian blur again. And this time you want to use significantly more blur than you had when you created this layer. So let's try maybe two or three times the amount. As you can see here, we have almost three times as much blur here. I'm going to hide this selection. So if you preview it, you can see that you have a much smoother transition. It's very easy to get excessive when you <laughs> work with frequency separation. And um, for the sake of illustration, I will actually go a bit uh, excessive here. So maybe we should put this one on 26. And I want to keep this number under the feather radius. So if we had a feather of 30, I think it's somewhat safe to go with the, the 26 uh, radius for the Gaussian blur. All right, so let's find another area. And maybe you want uh, slightly less feather here, then you can uh, hit F6 or shift F6 and maybe you want only 15 or yeah, let's say 20. That's still less than 30. And then you can uh, select some more Gaussian blur. Uh, you can do this uh, with a short command, but if you want to change the amount depending on what you have around uh, your selection. You might want to have maybe slightly less here, let's say uh, 21 or maybe just even 18, something like that. Yeah, you can still see that there will be a significant change here. So, all right, I guess you kind of get the idea of working with this uh, classic method on a rasterized uh, layer. So you can create your own selection, you can select the amount of feather and the amount of Gaussian blur, and it doesn't have to be the same amount at all parts of this image. All right, so the reason why you don't want to do this necessarily is because this is um, maybe not destructive, but at least it's uh, irreversible. So everything I have done to this layer is now done in a way that it wouldn't be if I was working in a smart object. So I will now show you the other way of doing this. I will throw away this layer and then I will turn back this smart object with the default amount of Gaussian blur, which was about seven pixels or something like that. And we will create a copy. All right, so on this layer, you want to, I'm gonna turn off the details. You want to make this one smoother so you can change this uh, smart filter. 
So let's say you wanted to have 24 here. You can see that you have a much smoother transition here. And then you can just simply apply a mask on this layer. And then you want to hold down your option key and click the layer mask. That will give you a uh, a black mask to begin with instead of a white mask and now we have one really soft layer here that is masked so we are now looking at the low frequency layer here you see there is no difference if i hide this layer or not so what you can do now is to paint a blur with a higher radius a gaussian blur on different parts of this mask so if i paint like this you will see it will be a lot blurrier uh, a lot softer because this is taking the skin tones from this um, extra blurred layer and not from this one you can see there is a difference there and as you can see if you put on the high frequency layer here you still have all the textures and all the details here So this is a very fast way if you just quickly want to paint on some smooth uh, skin on different parts of your photo. Perhaps you shouldn't go too close to the eyes and places where there are a lot of details. But I think you can kind of go around here and yeah, maybe paint a little where you want to smooth out the skin. And you can, of course, if you hold down control and your option key, you can change the size and the softness of your brush. But you can't really change the amount of blur that you actually have. So um, there can actually be some problems with this method. Because if you are coming too close to areas where you have a lot of details, so let's say that you want to go close to the area with the hair or maybe the eyebrows to make this a bit more excessive. You can put this to a hundred and you will see that it will now totally change color because now it will get colors from the eyebrow and from the hair. I can show you this if I disable this layer mask. You can see here that you have a really, really dark area where the hair meets the skin. So even if you have a kind of small um, edge here, you see this will not look good. So that is a problem with this method. So what you want to do here now is to, uh, let's hide this, disable this layer mask. And then you want to go and throw away this Gaussian blur. And instead what you want to use is a filter on the blur which is called surface blur. And what you can do with this surface blur is that you can blur large areas. I don't know why I don't see this preview here. But let's just uh, apply this blur. This is a bit intense for my computer, so that's why I couldn't get a good preview of this blur. But as you can see, you will get very sharp edges between the hair and the skin. And as you can see here around the eyes, it's almost not blurred at all. So what surface blur does, it's uh, blurring those large areas where there are little details and not much contrast between like the hair and the skin. And this is very useful if you say have a photo of a person with sunglasses and you have a very sharp edge between the glasses and the skin and you still want to make a frequency separation. So what we want to do now is to take this and once again we will create a layer mask. I'm gonna name this one surface blur. All right, so what we can do now is to take a white color. You can take a brush, B is for brush, and then you can select this 
color here and you can start painting on this mask with white color. Maybe I should have a slightly larger brush, something like that. And as you can see, there is a much more difference here in this. But I can still go a bit closer to, to the detailed areas without getting a lot of gray. So I can go closer to the hair and close up here. As you can see, the surface blur is very useful if you want to do this on a photo with a lot of details or a lot of sharp edges like this hair or like sunglasses or something like that. One thing I should tell you about frequency separation is that it's um, not considered the high end or the best method of skin retouching. So if you send your photo to one of those professional studios, they will most probably use dodge and burn. And maybe they use uh, a little amount of frequency separation together with dodge and burn, but it's kind of the fast way of doing uh, skin retouching. So if you have a huge amount of photos, maybe you have a series of photos or you are taking photos for a stock agency and you need a really streamlined process of how you are working with those photos, then I should really suggest that you work with frequency separation. And like I told you now, I have been using a very large amount of blur in this example. So if you do it not quite excessive, it will still look natural and maybe not as artificial or non-human as it can do if you just go bananas with your sliders. All right, so that was uh, three different uh, ways of working with frequency separation for your photos. Let's just summarize this briefly. If you use the old school way of frequency separation, you can use uh, different amounts of feathering and uh, different amounts of uh, Gaussian blur ranges for different parts of your layer. But the drawback is that what you do is irreversible and you can't um, modify it afterwards. But if you convert your Gaussian blur layer to a smart object, you can always change the amount of um, Gaussian blur. And you can also hide and conceal the effect using the layer mask. So you can always do changes afterwards. But you must all the time have the same amount of Gaussian blur radius across the whole layer. And that can be troublesome if there are some sharp edges in your photo. And if that is the case, you should instead use surface blur. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions regarding this. Or just let me know which of these three techniques you like the best. Or if you like dodge and burn better. Or if there is anything you want me to explain further in another tutorial or something like that. From Sweden with love, thanks for watching.